Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I see there's 30, let me see. I'm just trying to um, open up my screen a little bit lot bigger. Here we go. Okay. I see there's um, 32 participants. I'm only sorry we're not in the same room together. I'm, uh, Zoom is fine. It's a, we, it, it fills in, it fills a need, but I wish I could see all of your faces. So, um, and I don't know, can they see mine? They can see mine. I can't see mine. Okay. I can just see the, um, we're in different places today. So it's, we're trying to coordinate this. So um, I welcome you all and um, congratulate you for um, taking the time out to get some more information. I know how hard job searching is. A number of my people, a number of people in my family are doing it right now. It's lonely and it's difficult and it can be depressing. So I'm glad that you took the time and decided to um, do something on a Monday morning and, and get started. So my name is Lynn Winter Gross. I am a career counselor. I work at Jewish Vocational Service and focus on helping people write their resumes and um, have mock interviews. And we talk a lot about how to ace the interview. So that means getting the interview and having the interview and getting the offer. So uh, we're gonna go through the slides today and um, afterwards, um, happy to answer any questions that you have. So again, my name is Lynn Winter Gross and um, next slide, please. So the topics we'll cover today are how to prepare for your interview. And the main thing that I'm gonna stress over and over again is know what the interviewer, interviewer is looking for so that you can direct your answers to what the interviewer is looking for. And you're gonna be salivating, sell your relevant skills. Um, in other words, the skills, again, that the job demands. How to deal with difficult questions, how to address work history gaps, if there have been some. What about ageism bias and how do you follow up? Next. So where should I look for a job? Um, first of all, just exactly where you are, San Francisco Public Library.org has their jobs and career centers. So um, Angela probably can tell you more about that um, if there's time, but um, San Francisco Public Library is a great resource. Indeed.com, LinkedIn.com, Glassdoor, Career Builder, and uh, JewishVocationalService.org, um, where I work. So these are all great places to look for jobs. Next. First things first, uh, research the company. So <clears throat> I work with a lot of people who send in their resumes and um, we're looking at their resumes, looking at their interviewing skills. And I say, why do you want to work for that company? What do they do? Uh, well, I'm not sure. Um, you know, what are their challenges? Where are they in the market? Um, how long have they been doing this? What happened during COVID? <clears throat> and what is it about the company that interests you? So it's important that you know who you're applying to. Are you applying for a company just because you want a job? Well, that's not quite enough unless it's, unless it is, but generally, why do you want to work for them? If you have a choice, you know, why do you want to work for them? And then what job skills are they looking for? Um, so um, again, um, knowing what it is, what the job is that you're applying for. And then again, why do you want to work for them? Um, wh why did you choose this company? And then knowing again with the research and the company, just to go back up to the top of the page a second, um, not just looking at their website, but anything else you can find out about what they do and what their challenges are. Next. So getting a job is like a sales job, but you're selling yourself. And that's not easy to do. Um, we don't generally like to, or we're not told to brag about ourselves, um, but what are your skills and what are the job skills? So first of all, your LinkedIn profile. I don't know how many of you are on LinkedIn. I hope you are. <clears throat> it's a great way to look for a job. It's a great way to network. And we'll talk about that later. Um, and it's important that you keep that up to date. Uh, many of the people that I see with their resumes saying, oh, I just, I'm not quite ready for LinkedIn or I haven't updated it lately. You've got to, you've got to keep it updated. And it's a great way to meet other people. Um, network, network, network. We're going to talk about that. And <clears throat> arrange for informational interviews. 
what are what are people doing in their jobs? Um, is that the kind of job you think you want? Who knows somebody who knows somebody at that job? And what can you learn about what that company is like? Next. So networking over, I don't know if you hear of this um, number, but most jobs are not listed and they're filled by personal recommendations. So <clears throat> how to network? Um, sometimes it's hard. You don't, um, you don't know anybody who knows anybody or you think you don't know anybody who knows anybody. So if you look on LinkedIn, you can generally find people, not always, not always, um, who know somebody at the job that you can talk to. Um, and then you can find out about the job, about the culture. So if you're just sending a resume to a job, you know, they could get a hundred resumes, but if you've got somebody who knows somebody who can say, you know, I just talked to Jose and uh, he's kind of interesting. Um, I'm going to, I'm, I'm walking his resume over to the job <clears throat> department. I mean, to the employment office. And um, I, I think you ought to take a look at this person. So it, it distinguishes you from other people. Um, and networking lets you find out more about the job, um, <clears throat> who's at the job, what the job is like, um, who left the job and why, but, but it's really trying to get, the, get on the inside track and don't just send a resume. Sometimes you have to, but generally don't just send a resume cold because it's just gonna sit in a pile and, and that's, that's very frustrating. Next. How to prepare for your online interviews. First of all, um, eliminate distraction, distractions in the background. So I was with somebody the other day and we were doing a Zoom call and I was so distracted by her be unmade bed <clears throat> and the clothes all over and the dogs moving around. And it was, it was hard for me to concentrate on her. I mean, it was very interesting. And then somebody else had a very abstract painting and it was, and then somebody else's closet was open. And I said, you know, closet door was open and I said, you know, if you're gonna do that, maybe you ought to mute your background. And then also I'm sure a number of you have seen backgrounds where people, you know, the ocean and it's moving and all of a sudden somebody's kid runs in the background. It's very distracting. So if you can um, get a good background um, with good lighting, and dress appropriately. We've all heard about that multiple times. You know, you only need to worry about what you're wearing for the waist up, but dress professionally. And it puts you in a different mood when you're dressed professionally than if you're, I mean, obviously you're not gonna wear your sweats or sweatshirt to an interview, but you know, dress in a way that makes you feel that you're on a job interview. And test and practice with the technology. Um, I would assume, like I have, many of you have gotten on something and all of a sudden the technology is not working and you just can't get in. Um, <clears throat> and what I found is the most important is to have the interviewer's contact information. So many a times I've had to make a phone call, say I can't get on the Zoom call, I can't get on the interview, but I know I have a phone number to call. Um, if not, then you just, you know, they think, well, maybe they just didn't, maybe you just didn't show up. So, um, be able to have a backup in case your technology isn't working. And if you've tested your technology and had problems and see if you can figure out what to do and worse comes to worse, if you have to have the interview with a phone call, um, do that. And have a list of your job skills ready in your resume because you're gonna forget and you get nervous and um, you'll forget what it is that you're trying to sell, what skills you're trying to sell um, and what stories you're trying to sell. So you can have um, post-it notes on the side of your screen um, just to remind you of, of what, your, what your resume says about you and what your job skills are. Next. So <clears throat> for those of you who have had interviews, I'm sure many of these questions are very familiar. So the first one, tell me about yourself. Okay. Where are you gonna tell? Where should you start? So what are some stories that you have that are relevant to the job? If there are any. Um, so the fact that you, where you were born or where you came here or how you came here or whatever is interesting, but you've got some time to sell yourself for that you're the person for this job. You're not just out on a social, time, you know, getting to know you, you're, you're telling about yourself as it relates to the job. So 
if you're not working and they ask you, what have you been doing since your last job? Maybe you've been traveling, maybe you've been volunteering, maybe you've been taking care of a sick family member, maybe you've been getting ready for a marathon, whatever it is. If any of those things relate to the job, talk about them. I mean, push those first. In other words, you if you've been taking an online class, um, anything that you can that makes you stand out. So what are your strengths and weaknesses? Obviously, not obviously, I guess, but we don't want to say, well, I come into work too late or make a weakness or, you know, I never get along with anybody. That's not a good weakness. A good weakness is, you know, I learned that I needed to get people together more frequently and then I did. Um, so how, how a weakness became a learning thing and then it turned into a strength. So um, I wasn't included in meetings because I was this, but then I realized and, and then I did. Um, so I, I, I hope I'm making that clear, but you don't want to have a weakness just float out there as something that's going to not get you the job, but something that you learned from. And that goes into give me an example of a problem you've had at your last job and what did you do to solve it? Again, any problem you can have, and you should have these ready before you do the interview. Um, that could relate to the job that you're applying for. Um, and what did you do um, to solve it? In other words, you're showing your skills. Um, there was a timeline. It didn't look like we were gonna make it. Um, the pressure was on. And um, this is what I did to solve it. And because I did this, um, we saved money, we saved time, we got a new client, we got it in on time. Um, anything that you can bring up that was a problem, if possible, that relates to the job that you're applying for, or that's that's somewhat relatable, and show the skills that you have that you were able to solve the problem. Have you worked with a multicultural staff? Um, I'm not exactly sure how and when that comes up in interviews, but anything that you can show if there was an issue with that that you worked on. And why are you the best candidate for this job? Why should I choose you as an employer? And again, you're bragging, but you're, you're the best candidate because you've got the skills, your interest, you're interested in learning and you interested in the organization and what it's doing or the, the nonprofit or the business. And you wanna learn because you're interested and you, and you will bring something to them. Many people say, well, I'm, I'm coming because I wanna learn. Well, that's not, I mean, I'm applying because I wanna learn. That's, I'm not here as the employer to teach you. That's fine that you want to learn, but tell me what you're bringing to me, why I should hire you. Next, please. So again, you're selling yourself. Um, what is the interview we're looking for? What you, I assume most of you know the hard skills and the soft skills, the soft skills are, I, I get along with people, I take initiative, I'm task oriented, I'm a team leader. And then the hard skills are your computer skills and tech, uh, I, I just said technology skills, um, management skills, whatever, whatever the skills are that the job is looking for. And then transferable skills. Sometimes you don't have the exact skills, but you have some <clears throat> relatable skills that, that um, are different but similar enough that you can, you can get it. So, um, Give the specific work examples that are relevant to the job if you have it. And what did you accomplish? Again, I saved money. I helped save money or I got it in under the deadline or we brought in more clients or um, I was able to solve a problem which therefore led to A, B, C, or D. So anything that you could show that you're selling yourself. So think of, think of these interviewers as you're the employer and you are interviewing you, and what do you wanna know? Um, and again, um, I frequently suggest putting sticky notes up on the side of your laptop, <clears throat> just reminding yourself what it is that you wanna sell. Because again, we get distracted, we get nervous. Um, you know, I have a PowerPoint in front of me that I can look at. Um, you won't have that obviously, but you can have little reminders. Oh yeah, I wanted to tell them about um, the time that such and such happened and this is what I did. Next, what about if a resume gap? <clears throat> I mentioned this, excuse me, a little earlier. So many people got laid off during COVID 
many people had to take time off during COVID to care for their family or, or not during COVID. I mean, in addition to COVID, a family member was ill, they were ill, um, <clears throat> they had a new baby, um, they decided to travel, whatever, but um, it's okay that you took time off. Many people take time off. You don't have to be apologetic about it. But is there anything that you did during that that you can sell? Did you, did you I'm saying sell again, because you're selling yourself. Did you volunteer anywhere? Um, was there any similar skills that you used? Did you take new courses to, to refocus your career? If there's anything that you can find that's relevant um, to, the, to the job skills that they're looking for, push that in, put that in. I mean, I've, I've talked to kids in high school and they said, well, all I do is babysit. Okay, so what does that mean babysit? What did you have to do? Did you have to do a, put together a schedule? Did you have to have meals ready on time? Did you have to supervise whatever, whatever? Um, you know, are there skills? There are always our skills in what we do and what are those skills? So remind yourself of the skills. And then if you took new courses or that you're about to take a course or you are taking a course, um, anything that you've been doing to update your skills is important and let them know. Um, so you weren't just hanging out. I mean, maybe you were, or what if you traveled? Um, not so much during COVID, but um, you know, if you did, or um, did you learn anything or do anything again that's relevant to the job that would make you a good candidate for the job? Next. What about ageism? Ageism, ageism. Uh, many people are confronting that and many 50 year olds are confronting it. 40 year olds are confronting it because they want young workers, everybody thinks. So hiring managers may assume that your skills are outdated, um, that your salary requirements are too high. And why should I hire you at your higher salary with ben that may need benefits um, when a younger employee can be less expensive? Or maybe I'll think that you're overqualified for the job and that you'll get bored or that you'll retire. And um, maybe you'll not wanna work there for too long. So that's, that's some of the reasons that hiring managers may think that you're too old for a job. However, next slide, please. Older workers are good hires. Older workers bring experience to the job. This has been shown over and over and over again. I'm not just making this up. Um, older workers bring critical thinking skills, communication skills, they can mentor, they're good at teamwork, and they may want to do something different. So they may negotiate their pay because they don't, you know, they don't want the big job anymore. They, they want to help, they want to, they'll take online courses, they'll update their skills, they're excited to be in the workforce, um, they don't need to be, um, have the same job they had before, and, and maybe they'll take less money. Um, but that they do bring, and it's, it's, as I said, it's been proven, they bring experience to the job and can mentor um, other, of the, other of the team workers. So, and, it, and if you're lo looking at a place and you feel they discriminate, discriminate against older workers, maybe you don't want to work there. So that's something to consider as well. Next. It's never too late for all of us to learn new skills. I assume Many of you are taking classes either through any of the places that we've talked about just to keep updating our skills and learning new technology and um, just to keep it going, keep, keep learning new things. Next, please. Where can you upskill? I would assume many of you have gone to these places, um, can maybe add other places. So uh, here's a list of places that you can take classes and um, I'm sure at the public li at San Francisco Public Library, maybe they have even more things that they want to add in. Um, and maybe you have um, some others that you want to add in. But it's important that we that um, we all keep and sell the fact that we are upskilling. Next. Now at the end of the interview, they might say, hopefully, do you have any questions? So have questions ready. Don't just have to think of them on the spot. Um, so you can say, do you have any questions for me that you haven't asked or that I haven't talked about? Anything else that I haven't told you? 
um, about me. And again, remind them of your job skills and what you're bringing. What are the next steps in the process? If I get the job, what might the challenges be in the next 30 days? And how will they determine success on the job? Salary is something hopefully that um, you're not negotiating right here, right now. Um, if they ask about salary, just hopefully that they will be the ones to bring it up first, you know, and you ask them what the range are. And generally, when you're applying for a job, you will know what the salary range is. Um, so, but any questions again, again, um, ask them and remind, keep reminding them in, in, in the right way, what your skills are so that you're the one, you know, that, um, and how, how will you, what's the team like, you know, what are they working on? So show some interest in the, show your interest in the, in the job. Next. Thank you note. I talked to a friend of mine the other day that's been interviewing people and he said, almost no one sends him a thank you note. And the ones that do really stand out. Um, how can, he said to me, how can somebody take, come in for an interview and not send a thank you note? I just don't even understand it. So you can write an email thank you note as you're getting in the elevator. Well, you're not yelling in the elevator. That, that was, yeah, you know, sometimes we're back at work getting in the elevator. But um, as soon as you're off the call, you can send an email, thank you, or, or that day. And then again, remind them of your relevant skills. You know, I enjoyed talking to you. I thank you so much for spending the time. Um, I'm really interested and I think I could bring such and such to the job. So show your interest and share any ideas. You know, I, I've been doing some thinking and, you know, some, some areas that you might be interested in going into. Anything that you have to, you may, you may not, but anything that you have, again, to show that you're interested and that you have some other ideas about the job. I mean, about what they can do, that, that you're a thinking person and you, and you care and you're excited. And you're again, you're, you're selling yourself again. Next. And the points that I've been talking about, I just wanna reiterate networking, finding jobs on the hidden job market. As much as you can and with people in this group, I mean, I'm not sure and I'll have to talk to, see if Angela can answer, but if there are a way that people in this group can talk to each other, maybe on chat. Um, Angela, maybe you can add something to that when I'm done and research before you apply for the interview, research the company and practice your answers. Do a mock interview with a friend, with anybody that um, you can practice your answers so you're, so you're comfortable or more comfortable. None of us are comfortable having an interview, but that you're more comfortable. Next. Oops, that's it. Okay, what about any questions? And Angela, what do you have that you'd like to add? Are you there? Yes, <laughs> for as far as like people interacting with each other, um, you guys can probably do it through chat. Uh, we don't really give out people's information. Right. right now, so, okay. If anybody wants to do it through chat, <clears throat> but but my point is that there's people all over the place to network with, and right now you're the you know there's 44 other people on this call, and Angela, unless I'm not correct, you know I don't know if somebody can ask if anybody knows anybody or what you're doing or. Um, but here's a group of people looking for jobs that meant some of you might want to stay in touch with each other. Yeah, you guys can either go through chat or you guys can do the um, individual chat towards the people that you might be interested in talking about. Okay, any questions? What, what, am I, what about the questions that are coming in through the chat? I get a half a question here. What should I do? Go into the chat. Angela, would you like me to read these out loud? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the beginning here. Okay. Um, somebody asked about the recording. A link to the recording is going to be sent out to everybody who registered for this program. So you'll see that later this afternoon. Uh, let's see. Oh, good one. Do you have any tips for handling nerves on interview day? Mm, yeah, be as prepared as you can. And again, if you want to put sticky notes on the side to remind yourself of your skills and um, anything you want to remember about the organization, 
just the more prepared you are, I think, um, I mean, I'm not going to suggest having a glass of a glass of wine at nine in the morning, um, but anything that can remind yourself that you're that you've got the skills for this job or what questions you're going to ask or how you're going to sell yourself that you feel prepared. Okay. I mean, um, I could say go out or, you know, you can go out for a jog, whatever, but, you know, but just for the piece of the interview, the more prepared you are, the better. And the reminders that, you know, you, that you, that you're going to, what you want to ask them, what you want to learn, you know, you're interviewing them too. Do you want to work for this place? Um, what do you want to know about them? And, um, and then what do you want them to know about you? Next one, if HR coordinates the interviews and you don't have the direct email of the interviewer, is it okay to send a message via LinkedIn? I think so. Do you, Angela, do you have a thought about that? I've heard that you can send a thank you note to the um, analysts that's listed. Usually they have a person in contact at you list. You can probably send them and let them know like, oh, let, could you um, send this thank you note yeah. to the interviewers? And yeah. I think that's one way you can do it. Yeah, the question is, if you don't have the information of the person that's interviewing you, how do you write them a thank you note? Is that the question? Yes, that's the question. I guess you ask them. I, I haven't had this question before, but can, can you just ask them for an interview, for an email? I would assume you could just say, can I have your email address for follow-up? Yeah, or what's a good email address to follow-up? Yeah, what's a good email address for follow-up? That's good. Okay, um, next question. Uh, if I already have three years and no job, how can I prepare for a new job application? What does that mean, a new job application? So it sounds like this person was out out of the workforce for right. three years. So what right. would be a good way to re-enter the workforce? Well, first of all, figuring out what do you wanna do? Um, what kind of job do you wanna have? And where do you want, you know, finding ways to work and then networking with, with anybody that you can saying, you know, I'm interested in finding a job in such and such a field, you know, do you know anybody I can talk to and get to get back in or take a class in, um, have you upskilled and have you met anybody in the class you can talk to about jobs or the instructors about jobs? Like what, what it, really figuring out what is it you want to do and then a plan for how to get to those people in that industry that have those jobs? Or have you been volunteering somewhere? Do you want to keep volunteering or do you want to start out by volunteering just to get back in the game? Okay, uh, next question. Is it okay to ask the interviewer for their email address before the interview officially concludes? And it's, uh, is it okay to take notes while interviewing? Yes. Yes to both? I would say so, yeah. Yes. It was to ask the interviewer for their email address? Yeah, didn't, yeah, we just talked about that. And yes to take notes. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, what if the JD, I think that's job description. Whoever submitted this question, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, what if the job description requires you to have a certain skill but you don't have a direct experience with this but you do have relevant experience for 90% of the job description? How do you manage the interview questions related to that? I would say exactly that, what you know that you, I don't have this exact thing but I, I have, 90% of the relevant skills and I'm a quick learner and, you know, I can take a class online or, you know, I'm a fast learner and I know similar, if it's technologies, I know and use similar technologies and I'm, I'm interested in learning this one. Okay, um, next question. What is the best way to build rapport with the interviewer? Show your interest in the job, show your knowledge of the job. So, I mean, of the company and what they're doing. Um, show that you've done your research. Um, I talked to somebody the other day about a job and they said, well, I don't really know much about the company. And, you know, I really haven't done anything. I thought, well, this is, you know, this is hard, you know, to show that you're interested in, in them 
like you, you know, like you do with any person that you meet, show that you're interested in them and you've done, this is not for the person, but that you've done background and you're interested in them. Okay, um, the questions keep coming in. Um, and if either should... of you, Doreen or Angela, have anything to add, please jump in. Okay. Angela? No other comments. <laughs> okay, okay, but the two of you, please jump in. Okay. Um, well, I just want to add visiting and looking at the website is a great thing to do before an interview. And I've had jobs where I, I did like a little secret shopper visit uh, before my interview so I could just have a look around and watch Good. what other people did on the job. And that really, um, great. that helped once I was sitting in the interview talking to people. So um did you mean physically going to the place? Yes, physically. Yeah. This was pre-COVID, but yeah, physically right. going to the place, looking around, looking at what they sold, what they did, you know. So um, I agree with exactly uh, with what Lynn said. It's a great way to get familiar. Exactly. Okay. Uh, I had somebody applying for it, a museum job last week, and they said, I'm going to go and walk around. I said, it's a great, great idea. Okay, should we request a connection with the interviewer in LinkedIn or do we ask that during the interview? I would ask it during the interview because before you're gonna request it and they're not gonna know who you are, right? Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. But you can certainly, yeah, you can certainly look at their page. I mean, at their LinkedIn profile. Okay, um, here's a great question. For a mom coming back to the job search, how can you justify a few years out of the workforce? It's because you were a mom and that's okay and you did it. And is there anything, maybe not, that you did during that time that is at all relevant to the job? And, you know, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I mean, you know, taking care of a baby's full time. Um, if you had any, did you take a class online or? um do you, any did you do volunteer work or not you know otherwise you just you know i was taking care of a baby and now i'm ready to go back into the workforce okay next question is it expensive to get a career counselor some places offer them for free um is that my phone or somebody else's phone i think that might be you me Oh, it's my phone. It's, I'm sorry. It's in the, another another office. It's almost done. Um, there are some places you can get it, and, and you might know more um, at the library where there's, I think you have a couple of sessions coming up of career counselors. Um, yeah, the library does have a career counselor. It's every Wednesday afternoon, but you do have to book several weeks out. He's very popular, but that is a free service that we offer. You guys can also contact um, the Employment Development the, uh, Department Workforce Services, the San Francisco branch, and they also offer free career counseling online as well. And if you have a San Francisco Public Library card, you can actually go to our database job now, and they also offer um, job coaching as well. So those are some free resources for you guys to check out. And you can also contact me. I also, I also work with people for free. Okay. Questions are rolling in here. Um, not sure if you covered this. Do you offer references? Do you offer your references first before the interview or wait until the hiring manager requests them? How many references should you have? I would suggest wait until they request them that you don't offer them first unless you're asked. In many cases, I have not heard of people being asked. Okay. Uh, then, oh, I think we got to the end. Um, all right. Angela, do you see any more questions? Anything that went directly to you? What kinds of jobs are you are people in the in this group looking for? Oh yeah, put it in the chat. Um, before that, if you if you like, I'll stop the recording so that a lot of people I know don't feel um, feel comfortable sharing. So I'll stop recording now and then. Okay we can do um, direct questioning, so. Okay. Okay, 